Los Angeles is a city where all of your hopes and dreams can be accomplished, the land of opportunity. As they say, la la land, you may see it in movies, on TV. And there's so much good to talk about in Los Angeles. And I've done it a bunch here on this channel, but today we are talking about why you should avoid moving to Los Angeles unless you can handle these 10 negatives. What's going on you guys? My name is Darren Kriz. I'm a local real estate agent and native Angelino. I help people every single day buy, sell, and invest in property here in the greater Los Angeles County. If this is your first time on my channel, I post weekly videos of all things Los Angeles. I talk about the cities, I do some driving tours. I really cover it all in every specific individual area here in Los Angeles. If you have any questions, reach out to me in the description. There's my contact information. But today in this video, we're doing something a little bit different. I am talking about some of the negatives, some of the reasons to avoid Los Angeles, and I bet you think that there are quite a few. So we're just gonna get right into this one. Also, these aren't in any specific order. We're just gonna list 10 bullet points and cover each of them. But the first one here is the people. So a lot of people in Los Angeles seem to be ego-driven. They think highly of themselves. They'll put themselves above a lot of other people. Maybe they'll talk down to you. Maybe they'll treat the waiter bad because they are just in it for themselves. They want more money, more power, which is a lot of the reason why several people will move to Los Angeles. They think they see a lot of people of wealth, a lot of people of fame going to LA, living in LA. So they think they gotta do that. They gotta act a certain kind of way to live up to a standard but you don't really have to do that. In reality, just be yourself, be who you are, be a good person and good things will come to you. Many people are impatient. You'll see that when driving in traffic, people are gonna be honking. It's like New York City and LA. You're getting all these cars, everyone's honking around, everyone's trying to get where they gotta go. But maybe if you just head over to the west side, slow it down a little bit, take a deep breath and traffic will move. Everyone is trying to get to a place as well. You're not the only one in this situation, buddy. Several people that live here, maybe they were born into a wealthy family and they feel a sense of entitlement. So they feel like they should get everything handed to them. They feel like whatever they want should be done immediately. They want that instant gratification. They want things quick. They'll get angry, they'll get jealous. But you will get those people in other areas as well. LA, you will just see it a little bit more because there is just a much bigger population here. If you find yourself in different friend groups, in different specific events to where people really need to have money, power, and fame to show off at those certain events, then of course, you're gonna find ego-driven, power-hungry people. But if you want people just like you, I'm sure you can find it in other aspects in Los Angeles because it is so big. But let's move on to the next one here. And the next one is overpopulation. So in Los Angeles, there's about 4 million people which is a giant number. When you think about it, that's more than the amount of people in a few states. And even though Los Angeles is huge, there are so many people, there still aren't enough freeways to manage all of these people, all of this traffic, because everyone has their own car, everyone, and everything is so spaced out. So everyone has to take their certain commute to their work, to their everyday, day in the life activities. There's no way to avoid the traffic out here, I'm sorry. Even if you live in San Bernardino or if you live in Malibu, you're gonna be in traffic at some point or another during the day and that is every day, seven days a week. Maybe Sundays you'll see a little bit less traffic, people aren't working as much, people are cozy in their houses, maybe watching Sunday football, but there are just tons and tons of people out here in Los Angeles. Another reason for the overpopulation is the illegal immigrants. Now immigrants are good, it is what's built America but illegal immigrants do not help society in general. They don't pay taxes, so the city can't be funded in the way that it should. And it hurts everyone else that is your standard tax-paying citizen that just wants the best for themselves, a better life for their family. But let's move on to the next one here. Now the next one is smog and air quality. Now there was a stat that came out last year that Los Angeles is more polluted than 2,400 other cities throughout the US, which is a large number, especially when you're talking about major cities. In Los Angeles, this is due to the fact that there are so many cars, lots of traffic in such a small area. Sometimes when you're in the hills, you'll just see the layer of smog hovering over downtown, which is normally not a good look. And you could definitely tell this in 2020 when there was nobody on the streets, nobody was driving on the freeways. There was literally no cars out because everyone had to be hunkered in their own house. If you went up to the hills during that time and saw some beautiful views of Los Angeles, they were unlike any other and you probably won't get these views ever again because it was so clear. You could literally see the windows on some of the buildings in downtown, I promise you. It was insane. You can see the water glistening on the ocean. The smog was just non-existent because there was no one out. The cars weren't really the big source of the pollution out here. 
but the smog and the quality isn't as great as a lot of other cities, but that's what you get for living in a major city such as Los Angeles. So go to Nebraska if you don't want any of that smog, but I'm sure you're gonna find it in most other areas Los Angeles, a bit more. On to the next one, crime and criminals in Los Angeles has been skyrocketing over the past couple of years. In Los Angeles County alone, there have been 206 homicides in 2022, which is up nearly 30% from 2020. 779 shooting victims, which is up 43% since 2020. The crime rates have not been too well out here since the start of early 2020 but hopefully as time goes on these will be addressed if you guys have done any research on beverly hills i'm sure you've seen that there has been little higher percentage of crime there as well which is true but they are doing the beverly hills police department city council they're doing their best job every single day to make sure that there are if you're just roaming the streets of beverly hills you're going to see more security you're going to see more cameras they're doing what they can to make sure it is the beverly hills that it used to be but just come out to la if you guys ever have any questions because they can be answered with just a quick visit or check out some of my driving tours if you can't check out LA in person because that might show you what it would be like to drive in LA. It's not everything that what the media tells you. It does seem like a lot of people are a little more scared these days than they were a few years back, but Los Angeles will always be Los Angeles. will always have this nice weather. It'll always be the place to be and people are still moving here every single day. That's why people are reaching out to me down below in the description to figure out what the best area to move is, what's safe these days and what's not. But let's go on to the next one. So Los Angeles is experiencing a homeless problem as well up about 4% from 2020, which isn't too high of an increase, but you are seeing it in some different places. You'll see it pile up in certain neighborhoods of Hollywood. In downtown specifically, there's more homeless. Skid Row having the largest concentration of homeless population in the entire country, which is where a lot of them will go. LA should be making strides politics wise into getting this homeless situation solved because it's not easy. Everyone that's homeless doesn't have the same problem. There is some drug use, but there's also just job loss, a poor situation with a family. And rent in LA is not cheap, so it is tough to find a studio or a one bedroom for under $1,000 a month without having a pretty stable job. But there are certain areas to avoid and to not avoid when it comes to living away from a homeless crowd, but that is just one of the problems that you will see when driving around and visiting Los Angeles, so don't be surprised. So the next one is a competitive job market. No matter what job you have, whether that's in tech, whether that's in health, whether that's being an influencer, it is a competitive job market. Me being in real estate, it is ultra competitive. Everyone wants to be in real estate out here because we have some of the greatest houses in the entire world. You just have to do something to differentiate yourself, to get yourself better every single day in whatever that is you do to make sure that you're gonna to get to the top of that industry. And competition is good. Without competition, you're just gonna be a part of the average. If you wanna be the best at your job in a smaller city, you can easily do that. Los Angeles is the headquarters for many different corporations, many different tech industries, tech companies as well. And so they are hiring at a higher salary than maybe another office job in Texas would be. So that's also another reason the competitiveness is high, but also the salaries are a little bit higher. But why would you wanna live in a small city where it's easy to get a job for a lower wage? You gotta go and compete, you only get one life, you have to figure out what that is you wanna do, and just be the best at your job. Because if you're gonna to move to Los Angeles in the first place, you're not gonna do it because you're an easygoing person that just wants to coast by and have, no, well, I guess you can. If you wanna coast by, have nice weather, you can move out to Venice, try to find a cheap place. Well, you're not gonna find a cheap place out there. Any, any job market's gonna be competitive. Even if you just wanna be a server at a small restaurant, it's gonna to be tough to find something if you don't have any experience for that. So that's the next point here. Los Angeles definitely has a very competitive job market overall. Next on the list, Los Angeles has high taxes. So the fact that it is expensive, that's a given. You're moving to Los Angeles, the city of angels, it's gonna be expensive, food's gonna be expensive, gas, rent, buying a house is not cheap. The total sales tax in 2022 is 9.5% here in Los Angeles. And don't forget income tax is going to be about 40% or so, depending on what you're doing. Make sure you save your money for taxes because the IRS will be on you. You gotta at least put half of your money away. But like I said, if you're gonna move to Los Angeles and find a nice job, you're going to probably, hopefully, make more money than you would in a smaller state, a smaller city. So that extra money needs to be put away toward taxes. It does come with a fee to live here. 
Number nine on the list is natural disasters. Now this is honestly, in my opinion, not a huge concern, but a lot of clients come at me and always ask me about these natural disasters, whether that is earthquakes, you have the San Andreas Fault, so you're always gonna hear about earthquakes in Los Angeles. And there are wildfires too, that you'll hear about on the news, wiping out cities completely here in Los Angeles. Well, honestly, that doesn't have, it happens like once every five years or so. There was a big one in Malibu, there's a big one in the valley, every, three to five years that will happen. Just make sure you know where you're living. There is insurance on all of this if you're buying a house as well. Just let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm happy to answer. As far as earthquakes go, maybe I'll feel one or two big, eh, decent, not big, but like decently sized ones where you can actually feel it and the room will shake. You'll be like, oh wow, that was an earthquake I was feeling. There was one probably that I can recall, the most recent one, maybe six months ago, it didn't even wake me up. So that's how often you're feeling these. They're not really gonna affect your day-to-day -day life. The biggest one or the last major earthquake out here was the Northridge earthquake in 1994 that really wrecked a lot of the San Fernando Valley. But there hasn't been anything as large as that ever since. So if you're not gonna move to Los Angeles because you're scared of earthquakes, then probably Los Angeles isn't the city for you. When I was a student going to school in the Valley, we probably didn't have school maybe a handful of days when I was in elementary school because there was bad quali air quality because of a couple of the wire wildfires nearby. And there is technically fire season that comes up that there'll be a fire every now and then. But let's get away from natural disasters. The last one also involving the climate are that there are no seasons in Los Angeles. Now for myself, growing up as a native Angelino, I never got to experience a white winter. It was ne it would never snow, it can't snow in Los Angeles. Well, maybe we'll see some, some hail when it gets to be 40 degrees. Well, I guess it has to be 30-ish degrees. You'll get some hail on your car in the mornings if it is raining. But that is the, the biggest amount of snow that we'll really see out here, which is nothing. I would love to have been a kid, wake up, and there was just snow outside. I could just run out there, make snow angels all morning while I'm opening up my presents, but was never able to do that. I guess I would have had to live on the East Coast somewhere and experience a white winter. But also that comes with its downsides because if you're living in Buffalo, New York, and it's gonna be negative degrees in the winter, you can't even go outside, you can't do anything. I can easily go outside and play basketball on the streets if I wanted to every day in December because in my opinion, November, December, and January are almost my favorite weather out here. Now, in the early mornings and the late nights, it will get a little bit cold, so you'll have to have a jacket. But during the day, it is just at a perfect temperature where you can just walk around, wear whatever you want, and just live the Los Angeles weather all year round. You can do this. So, of course, Los Angeles comes with its pros and cons, its perks, its downfalls. But I hope you guys got a little bit better of a sense of what you should learn to avoid. If you are thinking about moving to Los Angeles, those are definitely 10 negatives that you might have heard before. But I just want to break it down a little more so you can expect to think about these things when you're moving out here. So some, some of these don't shock you when you're driving around the streets of LA, maybe if you come for a visit. But also if you come for a visit, hit me up down in the description. If you're thinking about moving to Los Angeles, my team and I are happy to help people every single day buy, sell, and invest in property out here. If you learned anything at all, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Also subscribe for more informational videos on all things Los Angeles. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.